This woman made headlines last week thanks to an incredible discovery she made in her garden. Unsuspectingly, she bought a house with a huge war bunker buried in her backyard. And curiously, that wasn't even the strangest thing they discovered, because what they found inside the bunker was truly incredible. She didn't even find the secret door to this bunker in her garden. The entrance to this huge metal bunker consisted of a tunnel nearly 100 meters in length. And she and her husband found that entrance when they were busy with a major cleaning of their own house. They just bought this house and were still busy exploring everything, but this discovery really made the hairs on the back of their necks stand up. The floor in the scullery had been sounding hollow for a while, but when they saw this metal hatch under one of the cupboards, they were quite shocked. They decided to investigate. The cupboard had clearly been put there by the previous residents to hide this home, because when they bought the house, the entire room was empty. They'd taken all the furniture with them except the cupboard. It stood over the hatch and even the carpet had been laid in a perfect circle over the metal flap. It was time to find out why the previous occupants had gone to so much trouble to keep this secret. The cupboard was pushed aside and the manhole cover was exposed and what they found in it was incredible. Once the cupboard was gone and the hole appeared, homeowner Lindsay found it hard to believe what she saw. She thought there might have been a small cellar underneath, a place where the previous family might have stored a sneaky wine stash, but the hole went some 30 meters deep into the ground. An old rusty staircase hung at the edge of the hole and it was time to discover what was in the depths of this tunnel. Her husband went down first. And then they didn't even know that this tunnel would lead to the huge bunker in the backyard. It was a tight opening, but her husband Flint just fit through it. Lindsay had claustrophobia, so she decided to be his eyes and ears above ground. With a torch, she shone after him as her husband disappeared into the dark hole. See anything yet, babe? She called after him. It was almost perfectly dark down there, so Flint was happy with the light his wife shone after him. But soon she had to throw down the torch, because when he stood at the bottom of the shaft, he saw a long tunnel, perhaps a hundred meters long. Flint ran through the tunnel and Lindsay followed him via walkie-talkie above Graham. Soon the tunnel left the house and so they emerged into the backyard. A long straight corridor lay at Flint's feet but in the distance light could be seen. An opening that would lead outside or was there a lamp hanging there that had been burning for years? It could well have been as this tunnel had clearly been dug out by humans. Indeed, the evidence followed him all the way to the source of light as there was a long yellow electricity cable running across the bottom of the tunnel. Flint kept his wife informed of everything he found through the walkie-talkie but that really wasn't even necessary. Indeed, she could hear him through the soil of their backyard. I think I'm standing right above you, she called out loudly to the turf beneath her feet, and then she saw it. On the turf right in front of her feet was a small piece of concrete sticking out. It was between some rocks, so she had never noticed it, but this little gray piece of stone was clearly man-made. She caught up with her brother, and while her husband continued his way underground through the tunnel, the two of them started digging. In no time, they'd reached the top of the tunnel. They looked down and saw her husband Flint standing there, and that wasn't the only thing they'd just unearthed. Flint told him there was a big iron door down here, but he couldn't get it open on his own. Lindsay and her brother jumped into the hole with him, and so the three of them tried to pull the door. It was enormously heavy. What could be hidden behind it? How could there have just been a giant tunnel under their house without them knowing it? Lindsay fell silent for a moment, looking in amazement at the long tube she'd just taken a seat in. Are you going to help us? She then heard her husband call out. Oh yeah, of course. Wandered off for a moment, she declared. The three of them pulled as hard as they could on the rusty handle of the door, and with a big bang it slammed open. What was this place like? They saw immediately that people had lived there, for less than a meter behind the door was the next. The room was filled with old glass jars and bottles. According to the labels, they were filled with whiskey and rum and what struck her most was the year, 1945. These bottles are over 77 years old, she exclaimed in amazement. Lindsay was hugely impressed and almost wanted to call the newspaper at that point, but this discovery was nothing compared to what they were about to find at any moment. They decided to walk on. While Flint, Lindsay, and her brother continued their search underground above ground, an excavation team was busy digging out the huge bunker. Luckily, her neighbor was a contractor and had a small excavator on standby, otherwise this excavation would have taken weeks. The picture here shows just how big this bunker was and then they had only managed to excavate a small part. Flint, Lindsay, and her brother could be heard from the ventilation shaft marked with a circle in the picture. The object was being thoroughly examined from outside but the underground tree would be the first to make a gigantic discovery. Indeed, the first thing Lindsay Flint and her brother found was a large suitcase. It was old and rusty, but that didn't necessarily say anything about its contents. The trio was extremely curious and cautiously walked up to the metal case. A padlock hung on it. Probably to keep secret documents or a treasure safe, Lindsay's brother shouted enthusiastically. It was as if Carl, Lindsay's brother, had a secret gift because secret documents was exactly what they found, and not just any secret documents. It was a report coming from 1945 which detailed all submarines of the Allied Navy on Mark. They couldn't believe their eyes. These papers might have made the Second World War end differently. The troops probably got stuck here during the invasion and these documents never saw the light of day again. But there were many more great discoveries to be made and those they would soon come across. 
The next discovery was made some 20 meters away in a new room. There was a cupboard that was still so perfectly intact that it looked like it could have been used yesterday. Clothes were still neatly folded, bed sheets were in a pile, and weapon holsters were neatly stored. It was almost like walking into a museum, Flint later told the media. But their research didn't end with this innocuous wardrobe, for the biggest discovery was made when the digging team stumbled upon something hard. The most important part of the bunker was uncovered. Cautiously, Flint, Lindsay, and Carl climbed up a ladder. They might be close to the turf now because they heard the excavator that was busy overhead getting louder and louder. It was pitch black in the room and the trio could see little, but then they heard a loud bang above their heads. The excavator had hit the largest part of the bunker and was digging away the first shovels of sand. Light shone through the room again and now showing crisply where they stood. Lindsay couldn't believe their eyes. They had to share this with the world. They were in the bunker's observation tower and here all the equipment was still there. It was perfectly preserved and seemed brand new. The lack of light and oxygen in the rooms had preserved every object in the best possible way. Huge binoculars, documents, and even anti-aircraft guns were present. They never found any soldiers, they probably got away just in time. Luckily, because Lindsay didn't know if she could have coped with that sight, but it was clear that they had to do something with all this stuff and of course the bunker itself, so they decided to do the following. It was enough to fill an entire museum with, Lindsay explained, and that's exactly what they did. Most of the bunker was excavated and restored to its former glory. The photo here shows the layout of the entire structure. The tunnel to their house was most likely used as an emergency escape route, but was blocked by falling debris. How the tunnel was eventually released, Lindsay and her family also don't yet know, but they're happy to share this impressive bunker with the world again. And what does the pride of their quest look like now? What is the state of the viewing dome? The dome has been fully excavated and now proudly overlooks the surrounding dunes, as it did at the time, Lindsay said. They've placed puppets to simulate the soldiers present at the time, which adds to the realistic effect, she explains. Lindsay and her family have since moved in. They lovingly run the museum, but unfortunately could no longer live peacefully at their little location. Besides, the escape tunnel has become a permanent part of the museum. Are you curious to see what the bunker looks like now? The bunkers now stand proudly above the dunes and are visited by nearly 1 million people every year. They made admission free so that as many people as possible could visit, and so it didn't take long before hundreds of people came to take a look at these special bunkers every day. Even though the war is a dark page in our past, I think it's important for people to know what all happened here, and these bunkers are part of that. As people, we can't look to the future if we don't dare look at where we came from once in a while. The interviewer asked, but why did you guys decide to move? And Lindsay responded, the tunnel is also part of the museum. It's how the soldiers were able to escape, and we wanted visitors to experience that too. Of course, we couldn't live in a place where hundreds of people walk through every day, but closing off the tunnel from the museum and keeping it as a house I thought was selfish. This is a part of everyone's past.